What did Rush used to say? How did Rush put it, right? Don't you doubt me. Don't you doubt me. Oh, I miss that guy. Rush the Great. Look at this, gang. This is today's headline from The Hill. We talked about this very thing yesterday. We are 24 hours ahead of the legacy media. They're playing catch up with this channel. Our little tiny channel, they're playing catch up. Now The Hill is reporting only now that Democrat Senate candidates are all distancing themselves from freaking Kamala. <laughs> I mean, let that hit you. If you're a Democrat Senate candidate right now in this nation, if you're a Democrat Senate candidate, the last person you want near you is your own party's candidate for the presidency. It, it actually gets worse. Bob Casey, the Democrat here in Pennsylvania, he's running commercials with his arms around Trump. I mean, you, you can't make this stuff up. And it's not just Democrat candidates. A major liberal left-wing newspaper has just refused to endorse Kamala. The New York Times of the West has just refused to endorse Kamala. Gang, butter the popcorn. This is getting good. Natural disasters are the new reality, folks. From the Maui fires to record level hurricanes, we're seeing catastrophic disasters take out entire towns in 24 hours with minimal warning, resulting in a lack of basic resources. Now, I get it. We're all wired to think it ain't going to happen here, right? And then in a blink, you're in survival mode. Being prepared in advance is your best defense against the unexpected. And clearly, we can't rely on our government. The wellness company's emergency kits completely remove the gatekeeper and subside panic by providing you with a personalized mini pharmacy in the convenience of your own home. Bacterial infections, staff, bite wounds, UTIs, strep throat, respiratory illnesses, you no longer have to be at the mercy of someone else to help you. You keep a fire extinguisher handy in case of a fire, right? Well, it's probably a good idea to have some basic medicines in a safe place in the event you need them. Same mindset, different product. Getting an emergency kit is fully digital, all from the convenience of your own couch. You fill out an intake form, a pharmacist reviews and approves it, then you receive the kits in two weeks. The Medical Board Approved Guidebook, crafted by Dr. Peter McCullough, tells you exactly what to do. This is preparedness simplified. Invest in your family's self-managed insurance plan. Click on the link below or go to twc.health slash Turley. Use code Turley and save up to $60 off and get free shipping at checkout. Click on that link right now. Well, here we are, gang. Yesterday, we covered the bombshell news coming from the Cook Political Report. They have officially moved the Pennsylvania Senate race from leans Democrat to now officially a toss-up. Pennsylvania, of course, involves the longtime incumbent Democrat, Bob Casey. He's been senator in Pennsylvania for like ever, ever since I've been here. I've been here, what, 20 years or so over 20? Yeah, 22 years. I think he's been here ever since I came here. It's up against him and the challenger, the Republican challenger, Dave McCormick. Dave McCormick is now either tied or taking the lead. And so as we reported yesterday, Casey has been avoiding Harris like the plague. In fact, I've seen his commercials here in Pennsylvania. He is aligning himself more and more with uh, Trump. This is, uh, I mean, it's literally like he's admitting that Trump is going to win Pennsylvania. So please vote Trump and me. He's not, Kamala cannot be seen anywhere near his commercials. It's hilarious. Yeah, he, and, and let alone Biden as well. He now sees Trump as the de facto winner of Pennsylvania. And he's ditched Kamala for Trump. You can't make this stuff up. He refuses. She can't. She did a campaign stop in Pennsylvania. He didn't come anywhere near it. And as I pointed out yesterday, to add insult to injury, it's not just Bob Casey. Sherrod Brown, the Democrat senator of Ohio, he won't even be associated with Kamala. And he too is running pro-Trump ads in Ohio. 
and perhaps most pathetic of all, the far ultra left woke nut Senator Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin, even she is running pro-Trump, pro-Trump trade ads in Wisconsin and completely distancing herself from Kamala. That will tell you what their internal polls are saying. That will tell you what their internal But now, finally, the legacy media is reporting on it. The legacy media is fine. Actually, the le- we'll find out the legacy media gave her a left-right. They gave her a combo today. So first, let's start with The Hill. The Hill is now admitting that Democrat senators up for re-election are doing everything they possibly can to distance themselves from Kamala. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to have a hard time getting through this without chuckling. She is now political poison. The joy is gone, gang. Remember, she was the single most popular politician on the planet. She was Obama 2.0. She was the second coming, man. It's 2008 all over again. (laughs) And now these senators, these soulless Democrat senators are trying to convince their constituents that they are the carbon copy of Donald Trump. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. And it's not it's not just the senators who are throwing Kamala under the bus. I told you the media gave Kamala a one two today, a left right. Check this out. The Los Angeles Times, the L.A. Times, the New York Times of the West. They are refusing to endorse a presidential candidate this year. And given that they always, 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 always endorse the Democrat, I believe they even endorse Walter Mondale, if I recall, in 1984. Given that they always, always, always endorse the Democrat, this obviously means they are refusing to endorse Kamala. This is insane. First, the Teamsters. Now, the L.A. Times. The far left woke L.A. Times is refusing to endorse the Democrat candidate? Let let me translate that for you. The LA Times basically just said to Kamala, um, we refuse to go down with this sinking ship. We've seen your internal polling as well. Heck, we're seeing the public polling as well. We refuse to board this Hindenburg. This is, I mean, seriously, gang, this is yet another. It's not even in its own right. This is yet another major, major snub. And it further underscores just how bad Kamala is doing in the eyes of more and more establishment liberals. Forget how she's doing in the eyes of your average voter and the In the blue all states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, forget how she's doing in the eyes of your average voter in Virginia. This tells you everything you need to know of how she's doing in the eyes of more and more establishment liberals. What do you think Joe Scarborough is thinking right now? (laughs) Old Joe Scarborough. Biden is added. This is the best Biden ever. He is cogent. Remember that cogent just hours before Biden imploded before the world. What do you think he's thinking now with uh, the L.A. Times refusing to endorse Kamala? It's not hard to see why they're throwing Kamala under the bus, gang. Uh, We just had the latest national poll drop today. This one is from Redfield and Wilton Strategies. Take a look. They've never had Trump in front before. This is it's Trump plus two. It's the first, if you are listening by way of our 20 million podcast podcast downloads, forgive me. I tend to defer to the visuals here. It is Trump plus two, 47 to 45. It is the first time they've ever had Trump in the national lead. In their previous poll, it was Harris plus two. So we're seeing a four point swing over to Trump in a matter of just a couple of weeks. And this finding, of course, corresponds with what we covered yesterday, which was the findings of two of the most accurate pollsters of 2020. They both have Trump in the lead 
And again, let that hit you with the popular vote. Remember, he doesn't have to be in the lead in the popular vote. Hillary was in the lead. Hillary won the popular vote by 2.1. And Trump became the first Republican to win over 300 electoral votes in 30 years. Biden won the popular vote with 4.5%. And he only won uh, in combined of Arizona, Georgia, and Wisconsin, 40,000 votes. Trump doesn't have to win the popular vote. Now, it'd be nice if he does. Talk about a punctuation point at the end of this uh, election. Talk about adding insult to injury. But the two most accurate pollsters of 2020, those show the same thing. Let's start with the TIPP, the TIP poll, their last poll some days back was actually Harris plus four. We've been talking about how the dam's been breaking and everything's been moving to Trump. Well, now it's Harris just two weeks before the big day. It's now Harris. I'm sorry. It is now Trump. Trump plus two, 49 to 47. Now that would be astonishing enough, but I noted yesterday that tip picked up a similar collapse with Hillary Back in 2016, so they do this daily tracking poll, just like Rasmussen, and they saw a noticeable drop in Hillary's support about three or four days from the election in 2016. So she was way ahead. She was up six, seven, and all of a sudden they saw her going down five, four, three, and eventually she she hit 2.1. They are seeing a comparable collapse even more dramatic drop for Kamala, but not three days before the election, not four or five days election, two weeks out, two weeks from the election. And it's not just tip. The latest Atlas Intel that just dropped, I believe this is their final, this is their final, um, final poll, Atlas Intel, right? They came within what, 0.2, 0.3% of the uh, popular vote total in 2020. Uh, Atlas Intel was the single most accurate pollster uh, for the popular vote in 2020. They just dropped theirs. Trump, 3.1%. He's actually winning a majority, 50.7%. So rounded off 51% of the vote, 3.1%. So that's the polling. The polling does not look good, obviously, for Kamala. So you could see why so many uh, Democrats would turn away from her. But it's the early voting that I think is really freaking them out. Actually, you know, we, we've got three indicators, right? We've got the polling, we've got the voter registration trends, and we've got the early voting. And it's very important to understand the early voting in light of the voter registration trends. That's an important thing to do because it doesn't look like Democrats uh, are doing that. Um, the voter registration trends are massively swinging to the Republicans. Uh, you guys all know what Scott Pressler has been doing in uh, Pennsylvania. 66 of Pennsylvania, 67 counties have all swung to the right. They flipped, I believe, five counties, Bucks County being one of them where I used to live. Uh, they flipped them from blue to red, a majority Republican. Republicans as a whole have effectively shifted the national electorate rightward by about four to six points. Now, given that Joe Biden only won by 4.5, that's gigantic, obviously. And it's very important for us to remember when we're analyzing early polling. Our good friend, Rich Barris of the People's Pundit, he's been talking about this actually today. And he's been getting really upset because Democrat, well, upset at Democrat analysts who don't seem to understand the significance of early voting in light of voter registration trends. One of the things that you'll be hearing a lot about over the next two weeks is what's called the Democrat firewall, their early vote firewall. So the Democrat firewall is the early vote advantage that they're, they are able to normally accumulate going into Election Day. So traditionally, Democrats vote early and Republicans vote on Election Day for whatever reason. Republicans do their civic duty. They come out of mass uh, on Election Day. And then the question is simply whether or not the Democrats amassed a large, a large enough firewall to sustain the Republican onslaught on Election Day. We all saw in 2020 and 2022, Democrats amassed firewalls 
that sustained and overcame whatever, you know, whatever was behind it, got, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, but they sustained and overcame the inordinately Republican electorate on election day. What's so astonishing uh, about 2024 is that Democrats think they actually, uh, Democrats are setting their sights significantly lower when it comes to their firewalls, particularly in Pennsylvania, interestingly enough. You have some Democrats who think you only need a 400,000 or maybe 500,000 vote firewall going into Election Day in Pennsylvania. And the argument is, is that what's well, because the electorate itself won't be as big as it was in 2020 uh, or that more Democrats will be coming out to vote on Election Day. Now, keep in mind, they had a one point one million vote firewall in 2020 in Pennsylvania. So a 400,000 or 500,000 firewall is a significant reduction from the firewall that ended up giving them only an 80,000 vote margin of victory in 2020. Here's the problem with that analysis. It's missing a fundamental element to it. It does not take into consideration voter registration trends. That's what makes this analysis so astonishingly ignorant. It does not take into account that Republicans have slashed in half, in particular, the Pennsylvania Democrat voter registration advantage that they had going into 2020. In other words, there are significantly less Democrats voting in 2024 than there were voting in 2020. At the same time, there were significantly more Republicans voting in 2024 than there were in 2020, which means that your firewall for 2024 actually has to be more than it was in 2020. Again, this isn't hard. It's just numbers. And even if you want to model out the turnout as slightly lower than the 2020 turnout, because, uh, I mean, because there are less Democrats and more Republicans, it doesn't, your firewall has to be a larger percentage of that turnout than it was in 2020 when there were significantly more Democrats in that turnout. So once again, it just, it looks like the Democrats are getting caught flat-footed. Again, we'll see. We'll see how it fleshes out in the next two weeks and certainly on election day. But the idea here is that they they think they can go into election day 2024 in a significantly more Trumpian Republican electorate with less of a firewall as a percentage of the overall electorate. It just seems to me absolutely absurd. And again, we're already seeing it in the state of Florida. And I want to show a very interesting connection between Florida and Pennsylvania. The data analyst Seth Keschel is calling Florida an apocalypse for Democrats right now. The Democrats are able, they were um, able to uh, muster a 7% advantage in their mail in uh, ballots back in uh, 2020. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong data, forgive me. They were able to uh, manage a 7% advantage in their mail-in ballots for 2024. But that seven-point advantage is now collapsing That now that in-person early voting has started. Just started the other day. It looks like as of, it may even be as of now, because this was written, I think, uh, no, 12.30, 12.30 p.m. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a Republican plus three by uh, mid-afternoon uh, today. Now, this is actually important for both Pennsylvania and Michigan because Pennsylvania and Michigan generally move in the same direction as Florida. There, there are several steps, but, no, I should say several. There are a few steps behind, but that's been the electoral pattern since, I mean, pretty much in every election since 1948 with the, uh, the sole exception being 2020, of course. But again, I need to remind everyone, this is not 2020. This is not a 2020 electorate that's coming out. Don't forget that. Again, we're all very cautious, no question. We're all concerned about what could happen on election night. Uh, you know, we're still traumatized by what happened on November 3rd. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. But November 3rd was foreshadowed by a whole host of other factors, a plus five Democrat electorate, uh, an overwhelmingly early vote advantage uh, for Democrats, uh, what they call their firewall. Right. In Pennsylvania alone, I mentioned it's one point one million vote advantage for Democrats going on to into November 3rd. And then, of course, Biden was up by double digits in all the polls. 
None of that is a factor right now. None of it. So the Republicans are absolutely crushing it in Florida. It looks like in the end of the day, they're going to probably be up. Oh, my gosh. Uh, by double digits easily. They're they're already up, I believe, about 27 uh, in uh, in in-person early voting. So they're going to totally overwhelm the mail in early voting uh, lead that the Democrats accumulate single digit lead. And uh, and that pattern, that pattern is um, it to the uh, uh, to the um, to Florida is does seem to be a bellwether. For Pennsylvania. Remember, Pennsylvania is a little strange. Uh, it's unique in that 70 percent of the population votes on Election Day. Pennsylvania is an Election Day constituency. It's the exact opposite of Arizona. Over 80 percent of the electorate in Arizona votes early. Interestingly, now, I don't know if they're voting from their winter homes in the East Coast. I don't know what. But the good news is that uh, Pennsylvania is getting redder by the day. Uh, as of today, Republicans have once again out-requested Democrats in mail-in ballots. Republicans are at nearly, I guess, plus 13,000 ballot requests. Democrats are on 9,500. And in the mail-in returns, Republicans gained another 2.2 points in a single day. So this is just drip, drip, drip here of Republican advantage in the Keystone State. Again, they don't have the majority, but they don't need it. They just have to minimize that firewall so as to overwhelm them in a super Trumpy, super more Republican electorate on uh, Election Day. So every day they're eating away more and more at that Democrat margin. So we could see why so many Democrat candidates and Democrat media outlets like the L.A. Times are distancing themselves from Kamala. But to make things even worse, finally, did you see this? Trump will now officially be going on the Joe Rogan show. Uh, this Friday, I, w I wasn't even able to get our, our producer uh, uh, a, uh, a slide for that. But yes, you will see that. Go to X and you'll find that this Friday may indeed be the single biggest podcast ever. Uh, you can see what this. <laughs> this is why Kamala did not want to start collapsing two weeks before Election Day. You, you got to understand, no one closes like Trump. This is this is what makes his candidacy unique. No one closes like Trump. Trump always closes strong. He did it in 2016. He did it in 2020. He's actually the strongest closer of any politician uh, we've seen. Trump always closes strong. So this is only going to get worse if if history is precedent here. I think Democrats are turning their backs on Kamala now. They're distancing from her now. I mean, again, if history is precedent. Just watch what happens over the next two weeks. Uh, I can assure you we'll be watching. And I can also assure you the popcorn will most certainly be buttered.